Hey all, this is Idrin with another solo LP this time. We had a little bit of technical hiccups with Hollow Knight this week, so we're gonna go ahead for now and I'm gonna go solo on this. I'm gonna jump into Planescape Torment, a game that I love and I've wanted to play for a while here. Never really got around to it. As you can probably tell, this is a game based on Dungeons and Dragons. Specifically, the Dungeons & Dragons campaign setting, Planescape, from back in the 90s. It's a very dialogue heavy one, so we're gonna focus in on charisma for this. And the rest of all our points we'll put into our other mental stats. So this is specifically based on 2nd edition Advanced Dungeons & Dragons, so it's probably going to be pretty different from what a lot of you are used to. But I'll go ahead and get into the details of that as we go. We don't need to get into the nitty-gritty of that right now. What's really important is the setting here. Uh, Planescape is a multiversal setting, encompassing all of the various planes of existence in Dungeons & Dragons. And we'll start right in Medias Res, right after that intro screen that you saw before. playing corpse or you're putting the blinds on the dusties? I thought you were a debtor for sure. Well, who are you? Uh, who am I? How about you start? Who are you? I don't know. I can't remember. You can't remember your name? <laughs> well, next time you spend a night in this bird, go easy on the bub. My name's Morte. I'm trapped near too. Trapped? Yeah, since you haven't had time to get your legs yet, here's a chance. Tried all the doors, and this room is locked tight in the chastity belt. We're locked in where? What is this place? It's called the Mortuary. It's a big black structure with all the architectural charm of a pregnant spider. The Mortuary? What, am I dead? Not from where I'm standing. Got scars of plenty, though. Looks like some Burke painted you with a knife. All the more reason to give this place a laugh for whoever carved you up comes back to finish the job. Scars? How bad are they? Well, the carvings on your chest aren't too bad. The ones on your back. Say, it looks like you got a whole tattoo gallery on your back, Chief. Spells out something. Tattoos on my back? What do they say? <laughs> looks like you come with directions. Ahem. <clears throat> Let's see. It starts with, I know you feel like you've been drinking a few kegs of sticks wash, but you need to center yourself. Among your possessions is a journal that'll shed some light in the dark of the matter. Farad can fill you in on the rest of the chant if he's not in the dead book already. Farad? Does it say anything else? Yeah, there's a bit more. Let's see, it goes on. Don't lose a journal, we'll be up in the sticks again. Whatever you do, do not tell anyone who you are or what happens to you, or it'll put you on a quick pilgrimage to the crematorium. Do what I tell you. Read the journal, then find Farad. No wonder my back hurts. There's a damn novel written there. After that journal I'm supposed to have with me, was the one with me while I was lying here? No, you were stripped of the skins when you arrived here. Besides, looks like you got enough of a journal penned in your body. What about Farad? Do you know him? Nobody I know, but then again, I don't know many people. Still, some has gotta know where to find Farad. Uh, once we get out of here, that is. How do we get out of here? Well, all the doors are locked, so we'll need the key. Chances are, one of the walking corpses in this room has it. Walking corpses? Yeah, mortuary keepers use dead bodies as cheap labor. Corpses are dumb as stones, but they're harmless. They won't attack you unless you attack first. Hmm. Is there some other way? I don't want to kill them just for a key. What, you think it's gonna hurt their feelings? They're dead. But if you want a bright side to this, if you kill them, at least they'll have a rest before their keepers raise them up to work again. Well, all right, I'll take one of them down and get the key. Well, before you do that, arm yourself first. I think there's a scalpel on one of the shelves around here. All right, I'll look for one. One last thing. These corpses are slow as molasses, but getting punched by one of them is like being kissed by a battering ram. If they start getting an edge on you, remember you can run, and they can't. Use it to keep them distance if you need to recover. Thanks for the advice. And now we get into the basic tutorial. So this is a traditional Infinity Engine game back from the golden age of Black Isle. The interface is very, pretty much the same from one game to another of those, actually. So, if you're familiar with Baldur's Gate 2, Icewind Dale, you'll know this, but a lot of you probably aren't. Uh, 
the basic interface, as you can see, is isomorphic, top-down. You control each of your party members individually, though you can move them, maneuver them as a group. Each one is controlled separately in combat, uh, but only the nameless one, our main character, can actually interact with NPCs. It's uh, somewhat of an old-school CRPG, and it's got some quirks because of that. So let's take a look at movement. That's pretty straightforward, pretty much like an RTS, really, the way movement works. You can set party formations here, different organizations based on what classes each party member is, how you want them to be set up. You've got a lot of flexibility here. So most of these other buttons are pretty self-explanatory. Uh, we can get to the dialogue window here to review what we've seen so far. That's pretty much standard. And here we can see our statistics. And this is the nameless one. As I said, he's our main character, our viewpoint character. Blank slate, doesn't remember anything after waking up in the mortuary. Now, some of these statistics are going to look a little different if you're used to 5e, 4e, whatever. For one, we've got Thacko, uh, which is complicated to explain, but basically the lower it is, the better your chance of attacking. Number of attacks, that's pretty self-explanatory. Lore, that's to be able to identify items without needing the help of a spell. It's uh, linked to your intelligence, I believe, in this game. Now, that's not actually from AD&D. That was added for this. Uh, but it's a nice little feature to have that. Uh, we've got saving throws here, which do work differently than they do in more modern ones. You've got different categories of effects rather than uh, categories of stats that are based on them. Different kinds of effects different classes are more or less resistant to just by the nature of that class. AD&D is a very weird system. It's got a lot of quirks. And I don't want to get too hung up in the mechanics of it, but you should at least have an understanding of it. We also have the biography here. I'm not going to read this whole thing out because it's a long-form text. I'll leave it up here on screen for you all to read on your own, or just pause if it's not enough time. But basically, like I said, blank sleep. We don't know anything about him except he's tough and he apparently can't be killed. Or at least whatever happens to him, he... Uh, that he's encountered so far, he can heal up from. I also got a little stat screen here just for records and whatnot that you've encountered over the course of your play so far. Right now, obviously, it's blank. Morte, same idea for the stats. You can see his array here. He's very hefty, which, since he's a skull and nothing else, that makes sense. Here we've got faction. That's going to play more of a role later. I'll explain it later. And alignment. Works the same as it does in any D&D game. Uh, you've got the lot of chaos access, good to evil access. Though alignment plays much more of a role in the setting of Planescape as in others. Morte was chaotic good. Here, the nameless one is true neutral. But this does change according to your actions over the course of the game. The so, armor class. Again, basically the same idea conceptually as in later versions of D&D. But here, the thing to remember is lower armor class is better armor. It doesn't make any sense, but that's the way it worked back then. <laughs> and again, because he's a skull, very hard to hit. Hit points, that's, I don't need to explain hit points. If you've played an RPG, you know what hit points are. And we can get into some more specific stats here, since Morte has a bit more detail. He's got special modifiers against certain types of attacks. He's got innate elemental resistances and weapon type resistances. Again, He's a skull, and because he's a fighter, uh, he gets faster progression in terms of how many attacks he can do per round. No base attack bonus or anything here, it's just purely level based, and right now he can do one and a half attacks per round, which is how AD&D &D represented two one round, one the next, back and forth, back and forth. Uh, you can see he's got two, two dots, two pluses in weapon proficiency fist. Weapon efficiencies are weird. Uh, he's got various ability bonuses from his stats. Another weird thing about AD&D is each stat didn't have a fixed bonus as you progressed. There are specific 
break points for different stats for each one. You got two hidden damage from strength and open doors and weight allowance, uh, armor class bonus and mythical adjustment from dexterity, con hit points bonus per level, uh, reaction, which is from charisma, which is how other people react to you, and then intelligence and wisdom have their own that are more linked to spellcasting. And here we've got Morte's biography. We've got a pretty good idea of his character just from this introductory se sequence and all that. He's a fast talker, he's snarky, he's the usual sidekick character. Uh, and here we get a picture of him. He's been dead for a few centuries, uh, but hard to tell the time passing when you don't have a body to worry about. We don't know why he's a floating skull. That's definitely odd. Maybe we'll learn why later on. And we get a not deeper, but a broader understanding of who he is here. He just doesn't care. He just does what he wants, has fun with it. You see a little bit of hinting here towards the nature of Planescape as well. Planescape is very much a setting where what you believe, what your philosophy is, is significant to you as a person and how you interact with the world. Because this is a setting heavily focused in the planes, which are literally a reality forged out of belief and morality. And again, he has the same information tab, works the same as it does for the Nameless One, so we won't get into that. But yes, that also plays a heavy role here in this game. Obviously, it's a CRPG, there's gonna be combat, we're gonna be doing some fighting, but theoretically it is possible to do this one fully talky, just almost a pacifist one. Well, almost fully. We, we all have to kill that one zombie, but other than that, uh, very much like Fallout in that way. So let's get to our logs. We've got basic quest logs here. Those work the same as they have in every CRPG almost since the dawn of the genre. Uh, we've got a nice touch here, a journal, which is empty right now, but as we get further in the plot, we'll have actual journal entries written by the Nameless One there. Here we've got a bestiary of sorts, uh, data on all the PCs that we encounter, whether or not they're currently in the party or not, and a nice glamour shot of Morte there, and a nice glamour shot of the Nameless One himself there as well. Uh, the, the very old CG style here, obviously out of date nowadays, but I've still got a soft spot for it. And, uh, as you saw briefly there, there's also a bestiary for creatures you encounter under NPC, as well as literal NPCs. Check here, you get a couple of bandages, pretty basic healing items, those. Uh, which will come in handy, because while we do regenerate, it is slow, and... Uh, I guess this isn't a spoiler, but while we can be killed in combat, and we just, at that point, literally respawn one place or another after we've regenerated enough. Yeah, as you can see here, bandages, small healing item. Anyway, so individual combats, not so much a threat for us. They are a threat for our party members, of course, so dying still to be avoided, but if someone's gonna die, we wanna make sure the nameless one is the one to die. And we've got an eyeball, good to know. Morte has absolutely no equipment slots whatsoever because, again, he's a skull, but he does have his bite, which counts as a fist proficiency. And it's how he attacks, does piercing weapon or piercing damage with his base weapon, and we can change that in the future. We can get some more teeth to shove into him, which sounds amazing. And yes, uh, this game does include weight encumbrance. Not something you see much... Well, no, I guess you do see it nowadays, but... I don't know. Anyway, all that out of the way, now that we know how to play, we know what we need to do next. We can get a look at the room, and... This is clearly the corpse processing room for the mortuary here. Where they prepare dead bodies for burial, cremation, what have you. And of course, those that 
have signed a contract with the faction that runs this one, the Dustmen, end up raised as servants. Now it is contract based. It's if you sign a contract with the Dusties beforehand, you can get a little bit of gold in exchange for letting them use your body for the rest of eternity afterwards. And hey, we got our scalpel. All right, you found a scalpel. I got to get those corpses. Don't worry, I'll stay back and provide valuable tactical advice. Maybe you could help me, Morte? I will be helping you. Good advice is hard to come by. I meant help in attacking the corpse. Me? I'm a romantic, not a soldier. I just get in the way. Yeah, that's Morte. All right, then. Time to introduce these corpses to the second death, then. And before we get straight to that, I mean, well, we do need to get the scalpel equipped before we do that, of course. So, go ahead and put that in our weapon slots. As you saw, you can switch between weapons. You can only use fist if you're utterly unarmed. It's a crushing weapon here, which is technically bludgeoning, but they call it crushing here to make it more clear. Scalpel, it's a piercing weapon. It's an edged weapon. Not usable by priests, because back in ad and priests were barred from using bladed weapons, because those drew blood. Only maces and flails for priests. <laughs> ad and was weird. But we don't have to jump right to killing. We can talk to them first. Of course, they don't have much to say. This one's been dead for several years. The skin along his forehead is peeled back, revealing his chalk white skull. And with chisel number 569 into the exposed bone. It's not carrying a key. His fingers are broken anyway, and his shoulder is heavily bandaged. If we did kill it, we might be able to take those bandages, but that seems a little weird. Uh, Chief, I can't hear you all right. They're dead. You're dead. You're talking to me. Yeah, but I'm special. Death couldn't kill my zest for life. These corpses here, they probably didn't have much personality to begin with. I see. Look, Chief, watching you try to swap the champ of these corpses isn't doing much for my morale. Let's leave the corpse talks for the barmies, alright? A little bit more description. We've got some rails here, which look to be used to move the slabs about. Uh, handy, that. Let's take a look at the next zombie. This one looks to be number 825, and apparently a hanging victim. Do I have a key? No. But again, if we killed this one, we could take the bandages. No reason to do that. We're fine. This last one, by process of elimination, probably has the key. Number 782. Let's... Check it out. And yep, holding it in its left hand. Only way to get it really is to hack off that hand, which means we'll need to quote unquote kill this zombie. Oh, guess you can use the fist when you have a weapon. Alright. Now, how do you initiate combat again? Because uh, we want to kill instead of talk. Um, oh, alright. That's it. And because this is more of a tactical-ish CRPG, you can set up auto-pauses, so then under certain circumstances the game will pause, give you a chance to figure out what exactly it is you want all your party members to do. We've got the basic settings right now. All we can do is attack anyway. Let's stick at it. And we take it down without even taking a single point of damage. So let's unpause and see what we looted from this poor eternal zombie slave. But first, uh, where is the... No? Eh, I'll figure that out later. Gonna show some of the stats, but give you an idea of combat. But we got the key, and we can move onwards. Let's 
So, let's find the actual door out of here. Is this it? And nope, nope, this is it. So, use the key. Lose the key, of course. Because that's how keys work in every game. And onwards. Psst. Some advice, Chief. I keep it quiet from here on. No need to put any more corpses in the dead because necessary. Especially the Fems. Plus, some of them might draw the caretakers here. I don't think you mentioned it before. Who are these caretakers? They call themselves a dustman. Can't miss them. They have an obsession with black and rigor mortis of the face. They're an addled bunch of ghoulish death worshippers. To be with everybody should die. Sooner rather than later. I'm confused. Why do these dustmen care if I escape? Aren't you listening? I said the Dusties believe everybody's gotta die. Sooner rather than better than later. You think the corpses you've seen are happy in the dead but can have it? The corpses I've seen. Where'd they all come from? Death visits the plane every day, Chief. These shamblers are all that's left of the poor sods who sold their bodies to the caretakers after death. Before you said something, I'm making sure I didn't kill any female corpses. Why? <laughs> are you serious, Chief? Look, these dead chits are the last chance for a couple of hardy bashes. Like, yeah, I'm not reading this. <laughs> last chance? What are you talking about? Chief, they're dead. We're dead. Se no. No, no. <laughs> you can't be serious. Yeah, Morte is also the traditional horny sidekick, but... Wait, didn't you say before that I'm not dead? Uh, <laughs> Alright, I'll try and remember that. Look, Chief, it's not obvious you're still a little owl if your kids with death, so I have two bits of advice for you. One, if you've got questions, ask me, alright? Alright. Second, if you're half as forgetful as you seem to be, start writing stuff down. Maybe across something might be important. Jot it down so you don't forget. If I had that journal I was supposed to have with me, I'd do that. Start a new one then, Chief. No loss. There's plenty of parchment and ink around here to last you. Couldn't hurt. Use it to keep track of your movements. If you ever start to get cloudy on important things, like who you are, more importantly, who I am, use it to refresh your memory. Updated my journal. And here we are. First, we can see that the zombies, both male and female, were added to the bestiary. The only reason why they're both added is because you get an uh, image of both of them. Mechanically, they're exactly the same. I just wanted to make sure you got CG either way. No changes to PC, of course. Same data. And we've got Journey. Where we've also got the entire contents of the tattoo that Morte read to us here, if we ever need to consult it again. And you can see down at the bottom, you've also got a search engine there. Search over the text. So you can see some more zombies here. This one here. Number 594. I appreciate how every zombie here has a distinct description, a distinct idea of who they were in life. Very depressing. So, Morte didn't describe the Dustmen exactly accurately here, and I'm not. Let Morte be horny on his own. Uh, they don't worship death exactly. Their belief is that the current life is a false life, and it's only the next life to come that is the true life. And the true death is the death that allows them to path into that life. And this might seem like any kind of traditional afterlife belief, except for the fact that the planes are the afterlife. Which is an interesting twist on things, and there's a sense to it. If you're living in the afterlife, it probably takes a bit of the shine off of it. But there's also a philosophical undertone to here. Uh, yep. Uh, at any time, you can talk to your party members as well. Uh, Morte here, just if we need to catch up on something, we could do that with him. But anyway, back on the Dustmen, they are one of the factions, as I mentioned before. Uh, one of the 15 organizations in Sigil that sort of runs the place. Here you've got 626. The Dustmen run the mortuary here. They take care of the dead in the city. Uh, cleaning them off the streets as necessary, taking care of funerary practices. 
Oh, that's interesting. 965. <laughs> Looks like someone forgot to tell this side to stop walking the rule of threes. What do you mean? These corpses don't have much left in the attic, so they can't do more than one task at a time. When they're told to do something, they keep doing it until someone tells them to stop. This poor sod probably finished some task and they forgot to tell him. Who gives them their commands? Either one of the caretakers here, or else whatever necromancer raised them out of the dead book. Probably one of the caretakers here. They're the ones who need the cheap labor, after all. What was that you said Updated before? My journal. About the rule of threes? Huh? Yeah. Well, the rule of threes is one of those laws about the planes, about things saying to happen in threes, or everything's composed of three parts, always three choices. You don't sound like you hold much faith in it. A little wash, if you ask me. You look for a number, any number, and try to attach some great meaning to it, you'll find plenty of coincidences. Let's check this one a bit more. Obviously, it's not going to talk to us. The steering was interesting, though. Well, these seem like there might be a bit more there than others. Probably not mines of any degree, but... Anyway, got number 396 here. Can you get these bandages from it? Yep. Doesn't care. It's just going to bandage the bodies with nothing. And... Might as well be polite. But... We need more healing items, just in case things go poorly. Oh, anything in here? Nope. One, two, oh, one. Huh. A note. And since we've got the scalpel, we can just slice the mouth open. And get that note free. And get a little bit of experience for it, too. So, now that we've got that note, anything else? Nope. Not really. Let's take a look at it now. And move these here. So that they're actually useful. Ah, this was a fellow who was trying to get out of his contract. And offering something in exchange. Either the dustman didn't notice it, or they didn't care. Probably didn't notice it, it sounds like. But... Hard to know if they would care if they had found the note. Contract number serve as the key. Okay, this this is a barely a puzzle. This is This is a nice little thing though. There's these little little bits of things thrown in here and there just to give more color. And I'll again help flesh out each of the individual zombies so they aren't just bog standard interchangeable enemies. And last fold here. And a pyramid. And inside. Oh. Let's take a look at that. Now the blue background there means this is magical. We don't we don't have enough lore to figure out exactly what it does just by looking at it. And unfortunately, we don't have any magic to identify it either. So right now, we don't know what it does. So we're not going to risk equipping it yet. I mean, if it was meant as a reward that was worth more than the contract, it's probably harmless, but why risk it if we don't have to? Ten 
1096. And an actual person here. Or a massive book. Doll. They even know we're here? Greetings. Whoa, Chief, what are you doing? I was going to speak with this scribe. You might know something about how I got here. Look, right in your bone box with dust, you should be the last thing. We especially shouldn't be swapping the channel with sick dusties. Come on, let's leave. Quickly, if this place to laugh, the bet. The weight of years hangs heavy upon me, restless one. But I do not yet count deafness among my ailments. Restless one, do you know me? Know you? I. I have never known you, restless one. No more than you have known yourself. If you have forgotten, have you not? Who are you? As always the question, and the wrong question as always. <coughs> I... I am Dahl. Updated my journal. Perhaps you can ask some questions for me, Dahl. What is this place? You are in the mortuary, restless one. Again you have... <coughs> This is the waiting room for those about to depart the shadow of this life. This is where the dead are brought to be interred or cremated. It is our responsibility as dustmen to care for the dead, those who have left this shadow of life and walked the path to true death. Your wounds must have exacted a heavy toll if you do not recognize this place. It is almost your home. We dustmen are a faction, a gathering of those of us that recognize the illusion of this life. We await the next life and help others on their journey. True death is non-existence, a state devoid of reason, of sensation, of passion, <coughs> a state of purity. Sounds like oblivion. Why would anyone want that? Is it worse than remaining in the shadow of what life once was? I think not. You see, restless one, this life, it is not real. Your life, my life, they are shadows. Flickerings of what life once was. This life is where we end up after we die. And here we remain, trapped, caged, until we can achieve the true death. What makes you think this life is real? Look inside yourself. Do you not feel something lacking? This is a purgatory. There is only sorrow here. Misery. Torment. These are not the elements that make up life. They are part of the cage that traps us in this shadow. Cage us? How? Passions carry weight. They anchor many to the shadow of life. As long as one clings to emotion, they will be continually reborn into this life, forever suffering, never knowing the purity of true death. Kill your passions. Strip yourself of the need for sensation. When you are truly cleansed, then the cycle of rebirth will end, and you will achieve peace. Past these shells of ours, past the eternal boundary, lies the peace that all souls seek. And there we get a better picture of the philosophy of the dustmen from one of them. Much better description than I gave. And we get a bit more picture of ourself here. Updated my journal. I speak of the wounds of the mind. You have forgotten much, have you not? Mayhap your true wounds run much deeper than the scars that decorate your surface. Updated my journal. 
I don't think I'm going to go with reading everything, just the important parts like that, because I'm already feeling a little worn out from that. But apparently we've had other Updated companions in the past journal. once have died with us, including one just now. Well, that's something to investigate. Northwest Memorial Hall on the floor below us. Maybe that'll trigger some memories on our end. Well... Came here, sounds like the way all corpses do. Brought in with the other dead bodies. That updated my journal. Every so often litter the streets of Sigil. Farod. That's a name we know. And he was the one that dropped our body here. Interesting. But if he knows us, and we know him, wouldn't he have known that we would come back? Even more reason to check with him. Huh. Has he done that before, then? Updated my journal. But then, why would our tattoo say to seek him out? Unless he left the tattoo there? That'd be a lot of effort for a few coppers each go around, though. Less than an hour in, and we're already getting intrigue. Okay, so he doesn't just collect the bodies. He robs them, too. And it sounds like Farad might be the one to have our journal at that. Even more reason to seek him out. It sounds like it very well could be a trap, but... Hmm... Well, that's something, at least. Ah, uh, he records the dead. Make sure that Updated every person who comes through here remains known. And that's good to know. No one else in the Dustman knows about our regeneration, which given the nature of their philosophy, they probably would not appreciate much. Uh, yeah, of course he wouldn't. And that's about everything. Well, gain a lot of information. I don't know if we can think of him as a friend, but at least he's someone who knows us. And that's something when we don't have anything else behind us. 1094, another worker zombie. Uh, can't continue that way. Just get a 
balcony over a big pit? Hmm. I better look at Doll Sprite there. The sprite work in this game is great. We check this zombie yet? Oh, that's just 1096 again. Okay. Well. How about here? Nothing. I've got more of the mortuary to explore, but we've already learned a lot, and this seems like a good place to leave it. You can also see just the depth of our journaling here and how much we get recorded. So, very nice if you need to come back. Other NPCs, we have Doll listed here as well. So, uh, this will be it. And I can't say when the next episode of this will be, because this was kind of a surprise. But... We'll pick things up later. And we do have the combat log. Okay, well, you can see it works kind of like the way D&D works, as it does today. You can go into more detail later. Especially since, honestly, as you might have been able to tell here and there, this is actually old footage that I was never, uh, that I never turned into an LP <laughs> that I had handy. Um, and I would like to continue with it. We'll, we'll see how things go, though. But, anyway. Hope you all enjoyed, and we will see you next time with Hollow Knight properly. Till then, everyone. Bye.